The northern white rhino has survived a lot over the years and fared well against natural disasters and Earth's tumultuous changes. But in the end, they couldn't fight humans. The last male northern white rhino, Stuban, recently passed away at the All Pejda Conservancy in Kenya. Even the most famous bachelor has a tough time finding love. Meet the rhino that was once at what Tinder called their most eligible list. He's now four to five years old and suffering from poor health. Ami Vital, a photographer, got to say goodbye before he was put down. It was a heart-wrenching goodbye, but it was relieving, Vital said. He leaned his head right into me and then the rains came pouring down, just as they had when he arrived here nine years ago. Vital first met Subban in 2009 when he and three other northern white rhinos, among the last of their kind, were moved to Kenya from a zoo in the Czech Republic. The subspecies had been reduced to eight worldwide because of poachers who target rhinos for their horns. Workers at the Conservancy watched the rhinos around the clock and protect them. The hope was that the climate and the extra room to roam would entice them to breed. But time ran out on Sudan, and now there are only two northern whites left in the world, his daughter Najin and his granddaughter Fadu. It was really hard on all of us keepers. Vidal said they've fallen in love with him. They say they wake up in the morning and see the rhinos often before they see their own children. They say, these are our babies. The tale said Suban was a gentle soul. He was very affectionate. One vet called him a sweetie pie when he was first brought back to Africa. There were these torrential rains, Vital remembered. I realized it was the first time he had rolled in African mud since he was a young rhino. It was beautiful watching him reconnect with where he came from. Then yesterday, when those rains came, he perked up, he was lying down, and he just pushed his head right up. Vital her voice, slightly cracking with emotion so that it was like Subban's life had come full circle. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. When he died, it was silent except for one little go away, bird chirping, go away, go away go away. There still might be hope, however, for the northern white rhino. Scientists have saved some of Sudan's genetic material and they hope to use in vitro fertilization to bring the subspecies back. They'll have to use a southern white rhino as a surrogate, Vidal said, but they like their chances. Even if they're unsuccessful, Sudan's death can leave an important legacy. At the very least, Sudan is an ambassador for so many other species that need our attention. Vidal said, this can be an incredible wake-up call. Even if you live 10,000 miles away, you can make a difference with your awareness or tourism dollars. Not all is lost. Even if we don't save the northern white rhino, we can save other threatened rhinos and a host of lesser-known species whose numbers are dwindling everywhere. Vidal has been taking photos for National Geographic magazine since 2008, and she credits the rhinos for changing her career path. For the first decade of her career, she covered conflicts around the world. Then in 2009, she learned about the rhino's story. When I first saw these ancient, gentle hulking creatures, they broke my heart, she said. I couldn't believe they had survived for millions of years, but could not survive humanity. It altered the entire trajectory of her work. She has since covered the plight of pandas, and she's now working on a story about giraffes and elephants. In a world of seven billion people, we must see ourselves as part of a landscape, she said. Our fate is linked to the fate of animals. We are so intricately connected. Take one species out and everything starts to crumble. The western black rhino was declared extinct seven years ago. Another victim of the lucrative and illegal rhino horn trade. Vidal hopes Subban's story can raise more awareness about the problem and that along with the efforts of zoos and wildlife conservancies, we can start to see positive change soon. I wasn't one that loved zoos in the past, but I learned how important and critical their role is in saving these species as do conservances like all Pejeta, she said. The sadness around losing Sudan to the sad, she said, it was heart-wrenching. However, the all Pejeta staff and their protection of these animals made them heroes in her eyes. They are often underpaid and in charge of something tremendously important. She said, these are people often with very little making huge impacts in their communities and the planet.